Well, you probably forgot. Go, forget the, it. Go ahead. The, you probably forgot the actual word that let's get it started was replacing. You get what I'm saying? Like Snoop Dogg, sensual seduction. Sensual seduction was so hot, you forgot the name of the actual song was sexual eruption. Yeah. Like, it, you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 all I'm saying is these artists would be best served to do a clean version of their songs. And by a clean version, I don't just mean like a like, oh, I'm rapping and then the word gets blurred out with like a oh, fill on her. Like that's just it's not it. That's not it. But yeah, anyway. Low, low key. I get what you're saying. Yeah, I just I'm I, if I was an artist, bro, I'm making clean versions. Cause you know what? Jam my song in February 21. Jam it at, at when you on the radio, bro. Yeah, facts. Jam it everywhere. Put it Spin at at, at the it. same time, though, how much? Because in the past, however many years, rap has become more and more mainstream. How many mainstream rap songs can you even spin to sound clean? That's fair, but that's but that's another part of the artistry to me that's crazy. That like, yeah, if you're true. Tr- if you're trying to make money off of this, right? Cause like, let's be honest, right? We, I hope that we all learned from this young thug situation. I hope that everybody has learned. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, listen, Lil Woody got a three hour tape of him telling. Three out. I, I don't think y'all boys heard me, bro. This man was <laughs> telling for three hours. Bro checked his post. Snitched so hard he had to check his post. Like, bro, am I still alive? Like. <laughs> Like, bro, and, and I'm not even here for the snitching jokes normally, because 99.9% of the civilians, actually, further than that, 99 point damn near infinite nines. When they tell you, hey, Josh, you got 40 years, you could tell us what Kenton did back in the day. Oh, oh Gibbs, you tell. out of here, bro. You out of here, bro. I, I'm getting packed up. <laughs> I'm getting packed up. Right? So, so, so here's, here's, my, here's my thing. Here's my thing. When it comes to quote unquote snitching, if me and Gibbs did something together, and we both get caught up and they like, yo, if you tell, you know, we, you can go free. I'm not going to tell because we were in that together. But if I'm right. aware of what's going on and I just got caught up and I had no part of it. Take- yeah. Y'all. But this this what I'm saying. But this what I'm saying. Some of us got honor. Some of us don't. But everybody got honor in a hypothetical. When you actually in there and they like, hey, bro, right. 40 years. Bro, I don't care what it is. Well, I'm... I mean, it's only so many things you can go to jail for for 40 years. So if one of y'all, and I've wrapped up this up for 40 years, y'all had to do something extremely wild, and I'm going to act like I don't know nothing. I'm going to be like, hey. look, this is what he told me. That's all I know. That's all I can do for you. Let me go in peace because I my ain't point, nothing to do with it. My point is this. My point is this. Rappers should be trying to rap to make money and go mainstream to get away from that life. Like, to get away from that, right? Like, mm-hmm. that should be your purpose and point. Your purpose and point should be to get away from, you know, I couldn't do nothing for my mom when we out the trenches. Get your family out the trenches. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. So with that being said, maybe make music with the thought in mind of like, I need to also have a clean version that can be spun everywhere and they not going to know. Because the last song I remember having a clean version that like was spinning everywhere was the song My Hitters, which obviously was replacing a word that rhymes with hitta, but is a racial slur if said by a, a person that doesn't look like us. Like, hmm. you get what I'm saying? And guess what? When we was at the Murphy Center practicing and all that, guess what was playing through the speakers? My hitter, my hitter. And our coaches was jamming <laughs> to it. Like, yeah, man, I love this. I love it. Coach Ryan Nilsson, I believe he's still coaching for the Saints to this day. You know what I mean? But, but anyway. We, we got a lot of show to get into. We got the Super Bowl just passed. We got the All-Star game just passed. We got a dunk contest that has made Brent Berry trend. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this, is, this may be the worst Black History Month of all time. Of all time. I, I, it, it's tough. It's tough. We looking at a tough one. As Mac McClung, the, he, he got the job done. Okay? Dame Tom... Uh, 30 minutes away from his college home, won the three-point contest. And Carl Malone, of all people, says it's too much scoring. And, you know, Carl Malone is one of those guys. He want to keep them numbers low. He is a, you know what I mean? <laughs> the scoreboard, age of consent, all of it. He want to real. We're not going to go there. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not going to go there. We're not going to go 
of there. And and speaking of 13 and 12, where is Aaron Rodgers going next? <laughs> where is Aaron Rodgers going next? That's, That's a beautiful what transition. To on today's episode of Facts Over Access. That sound good to y'all? Sound good to me. I'm scared to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it. What's up, y'all? Have a seat. It's your favorite hour of the week with the Facts Over Axe crew. We got the master of the mix and master dressed like the toughest cholo you know today, Josh Guyton in the building. Right here, right here. No. <laughs> Straight out of Compton Ziff. And we got the money man, the middle of the player, Chris Allen in the building. I'm in the building, man. And then you got little old MC, that's me, King Gibbs. Now, before we get into this episode, we always do a Would You Rather. Last of Us is trending, right? The Last of Us is trending right now. So I got to ask, which which movie, show, game would you rather be trapped in if you had to be pick one of these universes? The Last of Us or Dead Space? Um... I'm cooked either way, but I think I think I think I go with Dead Space. Mm. I think I go with Dead Space because Last of Us always told people like you know if the apocalypse was real, if this happened, if this happened, my will to live not that strong. I'm not about to keep toughing it out in this in this Last of Us world and figuring out new combat techniques and it's, it's not worth it. I figure with Dead Space, I'm cooked as well, but I get to see a little scenery before I go. I never seen out of space. Oh, that's I see. I see a couple of planets up close before I'm out of here. I might as well that's take true. something with me. Without hey, what, what, does Zale, what does Zale say? I'm leaving here with something. I'm leaving here with. Something. <laughs> I'm from around the way. I'm, I'm leaving here with something. Here with something. Chris, which one would you rather be in, man? I mean, which? so these are my two comparisons to the shows. You know, you got Walking Dead times two and Last of Us, and then you mm. got uh, the 100 on crack for Dead Space, right? Because the 100, like the world kept mm-hmm. getting ended. They kept going to different planets. Then that yeah. world end. Just a bunch of drama if you watch the 100. That's one of my favorite shows, by the way. But, so, I definitely ain't going through The Walking Dead times two, bro. Because these <laughs> infected on Last of Us, bro. Like, I played the game, but the infected on Last of Us is OD, bro. Like, at least the, the zombies on Walking Dead, they didn't really have a brain, couldn't really think or nothing like that. These guys on Last of Us, they got super strength, super speed, can go into the ground, can turn into, have have rock bodies and all that. Nah, about Dead Space 100%. Nah, no way, no how. You know, I, I look at this and I'm like, mm, this is tough. This is this is tough because, I mean, it's Dead Space is like, if you don't end up on the ship, I mean, you cool, I guess. Like... If you, because if you think about it, the whole premise of Dead Space is like humans figured out how to colonize other planets and move to other planets. Right. So if you don't end up on the ship, you'll be all right, I guess. But like The Last of Us, like if you're on Earth, like you kind of cooked. You you kind of you kind of cooked. So with that being said, I I would definitely. I would definitely have to go with Dead Space. Because it's a chance that I just don't end up on the ship. And even if I do end up on the ship, hey, bro, get me away from this planet. Hey, hey, bro, take me home. Take me home. Take me home right now, bro. We is not, we, I, I don't want to be here no more. Let's let's get out of here. Let's go home. Hey, uh, dialing in to Houston, we have a huge problem. It's some zombies on here, bro. It's some aliens on here. They acting unusually. So if y'all could just have a team ready. I'm not an alien, so no me when I get off the ship. But after me, it may be some uh, other organism. Just blow up the whole ship. Blow up the whole ship behind me. We don't got to worry about it. We don't, don't got to worry about it. We don't, don't got to worry nothing about it. But anyway, the Super Bowl went down. Chris was the only one who got it right. The Chiefs won 38-35. And this is why he's the betting man. This is why he tells you where the smart money is. What do, What are y'all takeaways from this Super Bowl? Um, my takeaways are one, I want to say to both of those teams, man, that was a perfect game of football play with the exception of what was it one turnover, the fumble by the Eagles? That yeah, that fumble was horrendous. With horrendous. the with the exception of that fumble and if you if you look at it, it uh wasn't as bad as it looked live. Like he tried to switch hands, he got hit in the process, I understand. But shout out to both of those teams for playing a perfect game of football. I think we saw the best two quarterbacks in the NFL go at it in the Super Bowl, in my opinion. 
Um, I think both teams are set up to possibly run it back next year with the roster that they have. I just want to say that I know the objective of the game is to win, and we all play sports. So, like, I'm not knocking it because I would want to win, too. And this is more on the refs because you don't call that holding in a Super Bowl, even if it was holding. You don't call that holding with the game on the line in the Super Bowl. Yeah. But kneeling at the one and then just chilling to run the clock out, like, I know you want to win, but, like, you took the possibly the best Super Bowl we've ever seen in that last minute and a half. I feel like everybody in the world that watched the game, regardless if you were a football fan or not, was just sitting there like, Ugh. But I'm, I'm telling you, defenses need to get smarter. Their reaction to that should be, like, not just like, oh, let them score. I'm going to force you in this end zone. Like <laughs> that, that's facts. That's facts. If we pick you up, they cannot blow the the ball dead. Like if we wrap you and you're still quote unquote running, hey, you just ran into the end zone with some assistance. Like, <laughs> true. What that are we is true. Know about that, what are we? You know, but but no, I do agree that that was a that was a tough way for it to end. That was a tough way for it to end. It, it, Chris, it sucked the momentum out of the building, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Chris, what did you think about that game, man? Uh, first I'm just Josh points, man. I'm a little old school when it comes down to it, bro. I'm one of them guys that I don't care how bad I win. I don't care what the score is. I'm doing what it takes just to make sure I get the win. I think the Chiefs made an excellent choice by kneeling at the one. That's me too. Chris used to throw the spitball. That was that, he's that type of guy. <laughs> Man, backyard that's baseball, that's spitball. You feel me? If, if, sure if, I'm, I got that. if I'm playing that game and I'm on Madden, I'm doing the same thing the Chiefs did. I, I understand the objective is to win the game, but those, it was it, it just wasn't fun to watch. Those other teams in the Burbs used to be crying and throwing up with Chris's on the mound. The ball was all <laughs> deflated and old. All types of spit and whatnot over. Bro, the ball is dead. It's dead. <laughs> no, nah, but go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, man. No, nah, but my take on that, that was a very, very, very well-played Super Bowl. You know, Jalen Hurts came to play. Patrick Mahomes, he thought he wasn't even going to come back the second half. He came to play. Uh, and, and can we talk about the defenses for both teams? Although it was a high-scoring game, the defenses was on point. They was not, they was stopping each other, but then also it was just the offense was just that much better. Like, if you look at Juju, he was played very well. He was just catching the ball in very tight spaces. Very, He never had a breakaway catch for a lot of yards, if you peep. He had a lot of incremental catches. And incrementals, I think, is what the Chiefs executed very well this game. You know, I think incrementals made the Chiefs the difference in this game. So, that being said, I really, really think that the Chiefs were the better team overall because Patrick Mahomes is just light years ahead of every quarterback in the league right now to me. Like, honestly, like... If you look at every quarterback in the league, right, Patrick Mahomes may be at least 10 overalls better than, if we talk in terms of like, you know, just something like a basic, he might be 10 overalls better than everybody else in the world right now. At least 10 overalls. I, you know, my takeaway from this game is Alexa play deads because the league is in trouble. The league is in trouble. The league is in some deep, deep trouble. And the NFL script writers going to have to go into overtime for the next decade. <laughs> I don't think that people appreciate what truly happened. Or not even appreciate. Not, not appreciate. Let me not use that word. People don't realize what happened. The worst things that could have happened to the NFL happened. Pat Mahomes losing Tyreek Hill was bad for the rest of the league. You want to know why? Because everybody said that Pat Mahomes was a Tyreek Hill merchant. He was the old Tyreek Hill down there somewhere, flinging 50 yards and the fastest guy on the field. Go does fastest guy on the field things. And it, it hurt his development in a way because he never had to be on time. So, Chris, the incremental catches that you were talking about with Juju, on time, rhythm, ball exactly. out, exactly. ball out. Yeah. Hey. At this point, he's supposed to be here, sit in the zone, ball out. He didn't have to do that before. And then the ankle thing, his ankle getting hurt. He could always scramble around, find something, find a way, work it out. He could always do that. But then his ankles hurt. He can't do it. I don't know what they did at halftime. 
I don't know what they did to that man. I don't know what oh, type. Oh, you know of, what they did. You know what they I, did. Well, yeah, yeah. He probably took a shot at Tortorella. Probably was off a of Perk eighty. He probably was the legend of Perk Mahomes grows. But that's not important. That's neither here nor there. What is important is him getting hurt and losing Tyreek Hill. He used to be great elite level at things that nobody else was great at because nobody else was as great at like off platform throws nobody else was had as much arm talent nobody else had that but now he's added the timing the rhythm the it happens right here right now oh boy oh boy oh boy and and here's the worst part what they got back in that trade for Tyreek Hill they could easily flip because remember, Tyreek Hill was a fourth round draft pick. Like Tyreek Hill was not a guy that was like, now granted, everybody knew Tyreek Hill had the talent. It was the character issues right. that made him drop like that. Sure. Tyreek Hill ain't the he last won, talented he, person. He won Chris Olave. He won Chris Olave. You know what I mean? Right. And, and he ain't the last talented person with character issues that's going to come through the draft. I'm sorry to tell you. Sorry to tell you, NFL. It's just not going to be the case. So, the, the NFL is in some trouble that they did not realize was coming because for whatever reason, everybody kept thought, thinking that the other foot was going to drop with Pat Mahomes. But if you had watched Pat Mahomes in that last Super Bowl that they played in, you could have saw right there. He threw a pass 40 yards and hit somebody in the face mask parallel to the ground. <laughs> He's not like the rest of us. And now that he knows how to throw that ball on time, yeah, um, I would be surprised if he doesn't finish with at least at least four Super Bowls. At least at that's that's the minimum uh, for me that I'm looking at for him. So now going forward for from this game, and and also Chris, what you said about the offense is being amazing. There was a catch by AJ Brown over Trent McDuffie. That touchdown catch where everybody's like, "Oh my God, McDuffie got lost. How terrible! How bad was that?" AJ Brown did a fake catch. He literally looked back threw his hands up as if the ball was going to be right there, which caused McDuffie to react to his hands. He pulled his hands back down and ran five more yards to actually catch the ball for a touchdown. That's elite level stuff. That's yeah. – you live with that. You live with that. Like, hey, if guys are doing that out there, you live with that. But now, moving on to my next point here, what do you think is the Eagles' path forward? Or actually – let me let me say this. Is Mahomes in the GOAT conversation for y'all already? Is he in that territory for you already? I would say yes. Mm-hmm. If if he retired today, just purely based off potential, because potential is a thing that you bring up in a GOAT conversation all the time, especially when somebody's career isn't done. I'm putting it there. Right. It's not a lot of people that you could put up there that got two MVPs, two Super Bowls, two Super Bowl MVPs. And, I mean, the resume is the only thing that's taken that away because as far as a skill set goes from a quarterback, we've never seen uh, a quarterback this good from just in a vacuum throwing the football perspective. We've never seen that. And he can run. Nasty work. Yep. Na- on, on one ankle, outrunning defenses. Boy, them perks was busting. Them <laughs> perks was busting. <laughs> How you come up to the Super Bowl and forget the perks? They didn't. They did not forget the perks. <laughs> <laughs> they bought them. They had them. They had them. Chris, is Mahomes in the GOAT conversation for you? So, I mean, let's look at it like this. Facts and data, man. Facts and data. You look at Brady. You look at Rodgers. You look at Peyton. You look at, I mean, some people say Drew Brees. I don't. But, I mean, you look at the, the, the Marinos. I mean, Everybody other than Brady, his resume is on par after year five. Yeah. After year five. Yeah, he got to be. I mean, that's the facts and data right there. His resume is already surpassed just about everybody I named other than a couple people that won three Super Bowls other than Brady. You know, I, I got to say this. It, it For me, it depends on what we're talking, Right. Because if you're saying like, all right, and and I know that this is going to be like, you know, knock on wood, hopefully nothing happens. But like if we're saying, oh, let's just say Pat Mahomes were to, you know, get in a tragic car accident or something where like tears leg up. Again, knocking on wood, we hope this doesn't happen. We hope that he does this thing and scares the league and gets him all types of Super Bowls and all that good stuff. But here's here's the thing. If you're talking like total career, like you can't put him in there yet. Because like, 
regardless of how you look at it, if you talk about what his career has been in terms of, of how well he's played in these five years, I don't think we've ever seen a five-year stretch like this. No. But also, like, to me, longevity matters a lot. Like, the ability to right. do it at a high level for a long time matters a lot. So it's hard to put him in that conversation. But if you're talking best of all time, like, if you're talking, hey, for one game, who do you want? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Who else would I go with? Who else? There's no other right answer to that question. There just isn't. I'm sorry to tell you. So, you know, but to me, just a little bit more, a little bit more longevity, which I know is going to come for him. And and he'll, he'll be in that conversation. But even still, like you said, Chris, his resume in terms of like, if you're a peak guy, then yes, there's no way that you can't have Mahomes as, like one of your goats already. Like there's no yeah. way. There's no way. But for me, longevity factors in. So I, I'm not there yet. He's he's knocking on the door. And obviously, like it's like Jack uh, Jack Nichols in The Shining. He he got the axe. He gonna come in either way. <laughs> but he's knocking to be polite right now because he's a younger guy. And that's just what's going on there. So that's that's what I look at there. Hey, 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 while, while we in Black History Month, though, I just want to shout out the first Super Bowl with two black quarterbacks meeting up with each other. How y'all feel about that, fellas? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. The people who called it the Soul Bowl made it extremely corny. And, like, it made, <laughs> it made me realize. Get out of here. It made me realize how, what percentage of this country is corny. Because, like, when I saw that, I was like, wait, are y'all actually, like, doing this? Is this a thing people are saying? Ew, this is gross, <laughs> but people were saying it. But I'm going to tell you this. It is it is a truly immaculate thing to see at a time when, like, a lot of guys who, like, when people talk about Warren Moon, they talk about the fact that he doesn't have NFL championships and he wasn't even in NFL um, for as long as some others or all that good stuff. And why wasn't he in the NFL? Racism. That's why he wasn't. Warren Moon is still alive and has all of his facilities. Like, Warren Moon ain't at that age where it's like, oh, my God, him blinking and waving at the crowd is, like, amazing for a man at his age. Like, Warren Moon is, is like, what, 60-something? Somewhere like, around there. He's he's not, like, dire old. So, to see not only one but two black quarterbacks in this game, when, again, the, the talk for years was black quarterbacks don't have the mental capabilities and all that, and to see these two running offenses that are infinitely more complex than what the quarterbacks were running back then when allegedly black men didn't have the mental capabilities to do it, it's just a, a, a great thing to see. Great I thing think we see. enter in the black quarterback era to some degree because you got Mahomes, you got Lamar, mm-hmm. you got Hurts, mm-hmm. right? Only two quarterbacks outside of them three that's playing better. I mean, I guess if you count A-Rod, but I mean, he's about 60. And if you count... Uh, Josh Allen and Joe Burr. Other than them, I don't really see any other quarterbacks better than those three back quarterbacks in the league right now. I mean, yeah, yeah, pretty much. And and when you when you look at the future, right? Because we're looking at the present, but we if we also look at the future, I mean, who are the top two quarterbacks in the draft? Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud. Yeah, uh, this is the year of the black quarterback. I think just it's like a matter of opportunity. Era. And I, and I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this. Who just got rid of the losingest coach at Texas Tech since 1988? Kyler Murray. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, and, and again, there are going to be people who tell me, oh, Ken, you're wrong, and Kyler Murray was the problem. Again, I have the tweet to pull it up. Call me what you want. Call me a soothsayer. Call me a psychic like that's so raven. Call me Negro Domus. I don't care. The history is written. I said this before he was drafted. Once the Cardinals got the number one pick and once Cliff Kingsbury was the coach, I said that day, Cliff Kingsbury is going to ruin the early part of his career and Kyler's going to take the blame for it. I said it on that day. And did the script not play out exactly as I said it would? That's exactly what happened. We got it on wax. When you get your big big house, that's something you could put on a fireplace. You know, just something you just like like a trophy <laughs> put down in the fireplace. Oh, I promise you, I promise you. When I get like a big gig, like when I get on ESPN and all that, and they do like my little graphic, I want like one of the the things that they list about me. He pre- correctly predicted that Cliff Kingsbury was going to ruin Kyler Murray's early career. That's I want that on there. 
I want if they got had hella famous in China for Stefan Marbury and Tracy McGrady, you can add for me. He correctly predicted Cliff Kingsbury was gonna ruin Kyler. You got that. You got it. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying there. That's all I'm saying there. Josh, how you feel about the era of black quarterbacks, man? Um, I just I think it's something that's long overdue, honestly. I mean, we've had uh multiple very talented black quarterbacks in the NFL, but it's just that stigma around it that if, you know, they don't immediately succeed, they don't immediately produce wins. And even if they do produce wins, I mean, we're looking at a league to where, like, Cam Newton been out of the NFL for three years now? Yeah, yeah, something and, like and, that. And, and can't find a job. I know it was yeah. ulterior motives, but at the same time, Colin Kaepernick was a quarterback that went to the Super Bowl pretty easily, might I add. And you know who's still in the NFL, which I could not believe. I literally could Jay not Henney believe. Jay the backup in Kansas City. I didn't think Jay Henney was still alive. Oh, I got one worse for you than that. Nathan Peterman is still in the NFL. <laughs> and you know who Jay Henney and Nathan Peterman are. Now, now, hold on. For reference, <laughs> for reference, for reference. People always say, well, it's about success. It's about what you do. It's about how you perform. Nathan Peterman has a career touchdown to interception ratio, four touchdowns to 13 interceptions. Do, do, do y'all know who? Do, do, so I'm sure when y'all was kids, y'all used to play like Madden and do the fantasy drafts, right? Mm-hmm. You ever do those drafts? You're like, y'all gonna have a stack defense. Yo, Megatron on here. And you get to like round 11 and y'all homie be like, yo, you ain't take a quarterback yet? And you be like, oh, when you, when you press that right trigger to go to quarterbacks, Chad Haney is, is who gonna be left. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? I give Chad Haney some love because while he hasn't done anything spectacular, at least he ain't been terrible. At least, like, there's at least a defense for, like, oh, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know the work that he puts in behind closed doors. He's secretly really good. He may be the a good locker be, room guy. The argument can be made. There is not an argument in the world to tell me that Nathan Peterman belongs on the NFL roster. There's not an argument in the world to tell me. And, and here's the funniest thing. Do y'all know who Nathan Peterman plays for? The Colts? Chris, give me a guess. The Jags? The Bears. Now, when you look at the Bears. <laughs> That's a very Bears thing. You look at the Bears and who their starting quarterback is. What's that kid's name again? I, I believe he started at Georgia, went to Ohio State. Yeah, What's his b- name? I believe his name is Justin, Justin Fields. Fields. Justin Fields. Okay. Uh, what is Justin Fields' specialty? I, I thought that he was one of the like first quarterbacks to – Rush for a thousand yards or so. Am I he, correct? He, he's a, he's a scrambler for sure. Yeah. Okay. Now, wouldn't it make sense to have a quarterback that if Justin were to go down, you wouldn't have to change the playbook drastically for the next guy up? And I don't know, maybe a guy who possibly had won an MVP and could tell him, "Hey, these are the pitfalls to avoid." Hey, this is what this coverage will look like. Hey, this is how teams will play you as a scrambling quarterback in a way that, I don't know, maybe Nathan Peterman can't relate to. <laughs> maybe. If, if only that guy were looking for a job. If only he were looking for a job. Well, you know, not even not even just that. Think about it, right? Geno Atkins has been a backup quarterback that's been very solid. And all of a sudden, you trade Russell Wilson and Geno Atkins like, oh, he he could start in the NFL. Like, yeah. this is not a game, you know? Geno yeah, Smith, but you're absolutely right. No, oh, sorry. G- yeah. yeah, y'all know what I mean. Geno, Geno, Smith, Atkins, is the, Geno yeah. Atkins is the D-tackle. I love me some Geno Atkins. That's yeah, my boy. Yeah, That's my yeah, boy. Yeah, my but yeah, my yeah, you good. You good. Geno Smith. Geno, Geno Smith. Geno. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, he's serviceable as a starting quarterback. You put the right pieces around him, he can start in this league. I'll tell you what, Mooney on most teams, Mooney is is uh, is Justin Fields' best receiver. I don't think he's a receiver, too, on like at least 15 teams in the NFL. I think at best, a receiver three. I think at best, mm-hmm. he's a receiver three. Yeah. If he can't, yeah. if you if you look in the conference, it, it's some nasty work out there for him in the conference. I mean, sure, he might be receiver two on the Packers. On the Lions, I mean... You're not taking J-Mo's spot. You're not taking Amara St. Brown's spot. You're not taking Chark's spot. You're not taking Reynolds' spot. You're receiver number five. 
Oh, on the Vikings is even worse. You not on the Vikings? You not taking Justin Jefferson's spot? He back the squad. Hey, hey, hey! I don't even know if you take an Osborne spot. If we be honest, you not. You not taking Osborne spot? Look, you know what I mean. So that's he needs some help. But but it is. But again, to see that there are two black quarterbacks in the NFL, it, it is pushing us closer and closer. Because let's be honest, we still aren't there yet. Because we're having conversations about Daniel Jones in year four. Do we pay him big money? I mean, is he is he the guy? Is he gonna figure it out? Meanwhile, we're asking, do you pay Lamar, who has an MVP under his belt? So we we're not quite there yet, right? We're not at a fully equitable place for quarterbacks yet. But this this was a huge step. This was a really huge step for black quarterbacks, and and you know we hope to see more of this uh, stuff continuing. Where again, race doesn't matter. It's just the best player for the job. Now, with that being said, how do y'all think the Eagles move forward? Or is there any problem for the Eagles moving forward here? Um, I think you just wait to see how the offseason goes. But I think the Eagles just move forward by keeping that same roster. They have, I think, like 11 free agents coming up. But if you look at those free agents, they only have one on the offensive line that's a priority re-sign. Everybody else, I mean, didn't play big minutes for a majority of the season. So I think I think they're pretty solid going forward. If this team wants to run it back, I know it's a lot more difficult to do that in the NFL than other sports, but I think the Eagles got it. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, what you thinking? The only position I think they can really, really strengthen and deepen is is the, the linebacker core. They have a solid one, solid one, but – they got pieces on that linebacker court that kind of young, and they could trade and get some more experienced linebackers because you see a lot of blown coverages over the middle uh, from that linebacker court. I think that's where the Eagles could improve on. You know, when I look at this team, I say to myself, I mean, they're good. They're, uh, they're great. Let's be honest. They're a great team mm -hmm. all around. They're good in a lot of areas. The only thing that they got is they're aging a little bit, right? Like Jason mm -hmm. Kelsey ain't going to be playing forever. Lane Johnson ain't going to be playing forever. Like, but they're, they're still a, a very good uh, offensive line. Their backs, good, young, all of them cheap. You don't got to pay a lot for Boston Scott. You know, you're not going to pay a ton for Miles Sanders. You're, you're not. You're just not. That's not how that's going to work out. The wide receiver core, A.J. Brown has already been paid. You don't got to worry about that. Devontae Smith, he's a few years away from getting paid. Um, same thing for your quarterback in, in Jalen Hurts. Defensively, I they have the number one secondary in the league. I I was just about to say I don't see any problem on defense. However, they lost their defensive coordinator, and honestly, in the Super Bowl, that kind of made me think it won't be that big of a loss because and and for two reasons. Number one, Andy Reid saw a play that uh, was from earlier in this season. I want to say week five or seven where there was a motion across and how they handled that motion. And he exploited their inability to handle um, a, a basically a fake motion. I, I don't want to call it yo-yo because it, it wasn't a true yo-yo, but it was one on the line of scrimmage where you start running across the formation and then on a snap, immediately head back to the flat. Their inability to handle yo-yo motion or that yo version of yo-yo motion, not once, but twice, gave up 14 points. And not just gave up 14 points, gave up 14 uncontested, easy. These guys are walking into the end zone. Do a little jig if you want to <laughs> on your way to the end zone. And not only that, the Chiefs offensive line played probably their best game of the season against the best defensive line that they were going to see all season. And there was nothing to help them out. There was no pressure added. There was no, there was no exotic blitz package drawn up. There was nothing. It was just like, hey, Y'all have been the best all year. Go rush. Go figure it out. That'll never get the job done in terms of if you're a defensive coordinator that I look at as a savant, it should be a chess match. You right. and Andy Reid should be going back and forth, one-on-one. -on -one. He adjusts, I adjust. We adjust it. He, he got to beat me. He got to figure out a way to adjust to my adjustment. It was just like Andy Reid made adjustments, and, and bro was just like, I mean, I, I, I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't – this is – a lot's happening here, so – um, I, I'm not sure if they lost too much there. Offensive coordinator losing him, I think that'll hurt a little more. But honestly, I think this team just holds everybody steady, keeps that fire burning from losing this year. And again, mm -hmm. you're playing you're playing in the NFC East, 
with, again, a, the Giants team who Isaiah Hodgins, who was stolen off another team's practice squad, was their leading receiver in that game. The Commanders, need I say more, I, I believe that they're going to be replacing their owner soon. I mean, and the Cowboys, who, I mean. It's the Cowboys. It's the Cowboys. They'll find a way to cowboy it up. They'll find a way. <laughs> If Jerry Jones is still breathing the air that God gave him, they'll find a way to cowboy it up. So, I think they'll be all right. I think just hold tight and figure it out. I think just try to run it back the best way you know how. But now, we've got to go to an extremely entertaining game. To a game that was supposed to be, all of, or a weekend rather, that was supposed to be all about entertainment. What did y'all think about this year's All-Star Weekend? Or at least just the Saturday night. We'll get to the game next. But just the Saturday night. What did y'all think? So, um, Saturday night, I've been saying this for years. I do miss the event where they used to have the, it's like the WNBA player, the NBA player, and then the legend. They do like the shooting mm-hmm. contest. I do miss that. But the skills challenge and the three point contest have been my favorite parts of Saturday, like for years now. I think the skill mm-hmm. challenge might be my favorite event. The three point contest is usually pretty star studded. Stars, all stars, borderline superstars usually come up to play in that. Um, this dunk contest. Now, this year, we can spare it a little bit because Mac McClung saved it, which sounds crazy. But if you're a basketball fan, you know that Mac McClung has been like this prolific dunker since he was in, in high school. I think we all taller than Mac McClung. Just just pointing that out there. We are. First of all, we're not going <laughs> to disrespect Murphy like that, bro. His first round dunks were crazy. Were cra- they, they, they were, but it don't matter. Jose Alvarado hitting the Grand Theft Alvarado off the backboard. First attempt. It it don't matter. Him saying, do you want the windmill or the tomahawk? And doing both? It don't matter. Listen, I agree. Trey Murphy has some heat. He has some heat. That's what I'm saying. Trey Murphy has some heat. My my favorite dunk contest performance of all time is like, I think it was like 08 Serge Ibaka or something like that. And he didn't make the finals because they wanted Blake Griffin to jump over that car and do that whack dunk. Serge had some fire dunks. Yeah, he did blow out the candle on that one. That's the one he blew out the No, candle. Gerald Green blew out the candle. Serge Ibaka had the teddy bear on top of the rim. Oh, teddy bit, bear, yeah. bit the bear off and dunk. And then his other one was a free throw line dunk where he was a clear foot behind the free throw line. I'm sorry, but no, no, no dunk contest performance will ever top that Dwight joint to me. That, that, I said, no, I said, I said my favorite. The Aaron Gordon Zach Levine? The Aaron Gordon Zach Levine? No, 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 no. Just, from, sh- just from one, just from one oh, guy oh. performing. It's now, still Vince Carter total. 2000 for me. It's still Vince Carter 2000 for me. I mean, listen, no, I think no, that the Vince Aaron Carter... Gordon, no, no, I Aaron think the Vince Carter 2000, like the nostalgia is kind of getting... I could be wrong, though. It's your favorite. No, so it, 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 your favorite. Here, here's the thing. Here's why Vince Carter still lives up. Because it was so much glitz and glam around the dunk contest by the time we had Dwight, by the time we had Zach Levine, Aaron Gordon. Vince Carter, not only did he have to pull out some fire dunks, because Steve Francis was in that dunk contest. Gary Stackhouse was in that dunk contest. T-Mac was in that dunk contest. So Vince Carter had to pull off all 50s because T-Mac and Steve Francis was like right behind him. And he showed up, did dunks we never seen before, and did them all on the first attempt. But the white did too. The white was bro. The white raised the rim. The man raised. The, the who was the white dunking against? I mean, I can't remember. I, I, that, but that wasn't important. It was just about which one I enjoyed the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you right. I was just saying. Go back and watch Vince Carter. Air hole. It stands the test of time. That man got up so high, he didn't even touch the rim. He just threw the ball in. <laughs> My brother in Christ, what's your frustration? And, and, and we've what? seen, we've seen that the dunk contest can re return to former glory. We don't need to see Zion and John Morant in a dunk contest. We don't even need to see that. We don't need to go back to the years where like Jordan and Dominique was in it. But when Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon were in it, they were still rotate. They started it. Yeah, we just watched a dunk contest with four men. The only person out of those four men that actually gets minutes is Kenyon Martin Jr. and he's he's on a worse team in the NBA. No, Murphy gets some good minutes, doesn't he? I thought he yeah, got some Murphy. Get, Murphy Murphy gets some solid run for the. For yeah, the, he yeah. got some run. All right, all right. So he if, if the, right, what are you good at? Defense. Uh, he's a lot yeah, better defender. That's pretty much it. I mean. He wasn't known for much else at UVA either. That's that was kind of his thing. He just wasn't. Bro, he, really he, like, he like he like he like a a a Marcus Spark without the Gucci belt. 
He he's like what Trevor Ariza was when he first came into the league. Yeah, he could yeah, jump yeah. out the gym and he could play really good defense. That's it. Don't ask him for nothing else. Like like Don't. he gave he gave Brian problems for every time they played the Pelicans. He gave. So Brian if this was two thousand eight, y'all be happy with Trevor Ariza in a dunk contest. I mean, OA had different dunkers, bro. They That's a. Dunkers. I mean, I mean, I mean. Ziff Casey is resting peacefully. That's kind of a bar. That's kind of a bar. That, oh, oh I'll you, be tight. I will be tight if Trevor you, Reese was um, In order to save the dunk contest, you have to completely scrap it. You have to either get some kind of incentive for these star players to be in it. And it don't need to be, it don't need to be Zion Williamson and John Moran. But we can have, I'm trying to think of somebody who, who can dunk. And you're like, okay, I will be happy with that. I, so I see it as two possible solutions. I see two possible solutions. Either one, put it in a contract that like, hey, if you're offered an invite, unless you have an injury, you have to participate. Like, just make that part of the contract yeah. now. Or, or what I think is a better option to like not force people to do things against their will, because then everybody's gonna come up with, oh, I got a club toe. Well, what's what's the or, name? What's the, what's the name of the weekend? All Star Weekend. Well, I'm but, your Jericho Sims. But hear me out. <laughs> Hey, hey, no kidding. And, and, and y'all can vouch for this. Both of the guys can vouch for this. When they announced Jericho Sims as being in the dunk contest, I legitimately text both of them, hey, who is Jericho Sims? We watch basketball oh. every day. I don't league bro? pass watching Kings versus Hornets games, and I don't know this man. Who is I knew Jericho <laughs> Sims because the, the Knicks, Mitchell Robinson, always hurt, so he always in the game. So that's how I knew him. Oh, we were we were shocked. We we legitimately did not know who, bro. Well, I was like, wait, what college did he go to? Like, who who, who is he? Where is he from? And, and oh. the person that had the most clout in that dunk contest is Mac McClung but because he had out. these viral moments. So so do something with that. If you can't bring these big stars, and we don't need huge stars. What's somebody? What's somebody that can dunk? But that and that's what I was about to say. If you don't want to make it, because let's be honest, part of me secretly believes that the 76ers did not sign him to a two-way contract because they actually are going to play him. No. I think no, no, no. They, they it said it in, when they signed him. It said it in, like they signed him so he can participate in the dunk contest. And that, that, my friends, is the secret sauce. Scratch that stupid rule that they have to be on an NBA roster to do it and get Jordan Kilgon to do, do some dunks. His dunks Something? are crazy. Yeah. His dunk, Bro, to watch him dunk, the, some of the guys in and one, some of the dunks that they were doing regularly over another human being yeah. that was trying to stop them. We we can set, we can set the bar at Anthony, at star level. We can set the bar at Anthony Edwards for the dunk contest. I would be happy with that. And if it's somebody that got a little bit of a name, they don't need to do crazy dunks. It's about the hype in the arena. We've seen some star players be in a dunk contest and do some mid dunks. And just because they're stars, the 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 audience be way hyper. It's a way better experience. So bring some of them Instagram dudes over. If you if you can't give me Anthony Edwards for All Star Weekend, like what we're we really doing here? Yeah, man, that's fair. That's if, fair. If, if you if you can't get me, I'm trying to so, think of some people that could dunk. But like, come on. So let me ask you this: Stephen A. Smith br- blames LeBron for ruining the dunk contest. Do you agree with Stephen A.? Did he? Did he himself saying that he wasn't going to do it and making it seem like a thing that was beneath him, did he make it to where this is like, eh, I ain't rocking with it. Like, other so star players there play. is a tiny kernel of truth in that, but I do want to start that by saying, let Stephen A just be old and, and hating. Like, what's the point of saying that? <laughs> here's, here's my thing about it. If LeBron were hooping, you wouldn't have a job. I, I, don't, I don't think these people realize this. Players are becoming more keenly aware of the financial ramifications of this thing. Oh, that was right. my other that was my other part of this. If you want to make the the it was three things. You could either force players to do it, which I think is the worst way to go, the get non non-NBA players who could dunk in it, or put up, I don't know. How much do y'all think it's worth to have a superstar in the NBA in the in the dunk contest? How much you think it's worth to get Ja to join in? Because Ja said he would join for a billion likes. But how much in money do you think it would take for Ja to do it? Oh, I'm oh, two M's. No, 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 no. So here's my point about the whole All-Star Weekend, right? And I'm, I'm, it's a long answer to answer your question, Gibbs, right? The purpose of All-Star Weekend is to give the fans something to celebrate the game, right? Give the mm-hmm. fans something and give the players time off, right? 
Absolutely. The purpose of All Star Weekend is not only that, but to showcase stars or people that could be stars in the league, give them a platform where they can shine at. That's why you see these yeah. randos in the dunk contest. That's why they do that Friday night game where you have rising stars versus like sophomore players, rookies versus sophomore game. You know, that's why you see stuff like that. So to me, the dunk contest don't have to be star so that you don't have to pay no money. You just have to put people in there that can actually hoop, just haven't had a platform to get their name out there. You know how many teams going to call Matt McClung now because he's going to sell tickets? I'll tell you this much. I'll tell you this much. You're not wrong. But my, my theory is this. How much could it really be? See, the NBA didn't do it right because they didn't incentivize it the right way. If you would have told Bron in his prime, hey, Bron, I got something for you. $5 million for the winner of the dunk contest. You think he wouldn't have did it? Uh, that's Brian you're talking about. Brian got a billion. So, I mean. Okay, Brian, before. Brian, but but, this, yeah, but in year two? Year two, Brian? Year two, that's that. what I'm saying. Oh, year, oh, two, year two, Brian. Year two, yeah, yeah. five M. If I'm looking at, I mean, Zion always hurts. So, like, of course, he's not going to do it. But <laughs> hey, bro, you hate Zion, Zion bro. You. I, don't, I don't hate him. I don't, I don't hate him. I don't hate him. I actually love Zion because. My tweet about him and John Morant is going to be the second one that I post in my house because I told everybody John Morant's going to have a better career because Zion can't stay healthy. So far, am I? Did I lie? No, no, no. I did I lie? On Twitter, I seen on Twitter, right? Crazy stat, and I looked it up, right? So people call Anthony Davis street clothes, right? Mm-hmm. He's played in fifty nine percent of the games over the last two years, right? Which is which mm-hmm. is pretty bad. Eighty two games means you barely played in half, right? Kevin yep. Durant has played in 53%. Zion has played in 21%. Okay. Kawhi Leonard has played in 47%. <laughs> bro, bro, people people really get on AD because he played for the Lakers, but he really play about 60% of the games. Really play 60% just, of the games. I would just like to know, <laughs> did I lie? That's all I want to know. Did I lie? I told folks, Zion is a baller. He's undoubtedly... He can do what he do, but the only problems for him, which actually I was wrong about him finding a position because you put him anywhere on the court, he'll figure it out. Sure. However, he has to get on the court to do it, and he has not been healthy as I predicted. So I love Zion, but I'm just saying, you put a $5 million bounty on that thing, you put a $5 million bounty on it, these superstar rookies that are coming in every year that can jump out the gym, that still got those fresh 20-year-old legs, they going to get in there, and they're going to mix it up. Not only that, though, Gibbs, the preparation with five M's on the line, the preparation for these. Right, guys. facts. Like, pe- pe- Aaron oh. Gordon, exactly. I mean, I, that's my favorite dunk contest all the time. Aaron Gordon, exactly. Because that was the first dunk contest I went to my boy house in high school. No, first year of college. And we watched. No, second year of college. Yeah, second year of college now. Uh, we went and watched that at, at a bar. Uh, and that dunk contest was so well prepared for. Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon practice and they knew what dunks they were going to do each part of the dunk contest which is why we even had them do a dunk off because they couldn't decide a winner because it was like okay they didn't did too many crazy dunks like, that was crazy that now that in terms of like full performance like full dunk that's contest, what i'm saying the preparation and, to me is what got to get better for the dunk contest and, and they they it's not that they were stars yet or they were these big names but even as a basketball fan back then when you looked at aaron gordon and zach levine you were like i can see a world in which these will be all star players or these will be that, good players that, that, and, and that's what i'm saying you don't need the superstar you just need the the preparation and you need the the players that just need something to get them over the edge to get seen a little bit more all i'm saying is all i'm saying is money make the world go round okay i proposed mm-hmm. the same i proposed the exact same thing for the pro bowl and the nfl didn't listen but let and me they ask play you flag this. football now. The Kia, the Kia, you talked about the dunk over the Kia. Wasn't it the very next year that NBA announced this partnership with Kia? It was indeed. How much money is it worth? How much like if you're the NBA to have everybody saying that Victor Wimbyama is gonna be the, the best prospect since LeBron? Now, obviously, you don't want him in the dunk contest. He's 7'4. It doesn't really work out like that. But right. Zion was also supposed to be the best prospect since LeBron and so on and so forth. My point is, there will be another one that they say he's the next LeBron just because he can jump out the gym, do all the amazing things. If you can get him to sign up, whoever that player may be, 
Hey, I got three M's for you. I got three M's. Three M's for the winner, one and a half for the uh, second place. What y'all want to do? What y'all want to do? I guarantee you, we'll see a whole different... It, it'll be a whole... Yeah. Players will be signing up and... Hey, 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 let me get that. Let me get that. <laughs> let me get that. Let me get in on that, bro. Let me get in on that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, that now, now, Mac McClung winning the dunk contest, he deserved it. He deserved it. You know what I mean? As much as I wanted to say it was rigged, as much as I wanted to say... Nah, he won was, by landslide. I wanted to say there was treachery in foot. <laughs> I wanted to say there was treachery in foot. I, I did. I did. Because not in Black History Month. You can't take this away from me. But you know what it was? You know what it was? It was Wayne Simmons winning the NHL All-Star Game MVP a couple years ago. And white folks ain't forgot. <laughs> they sent Mac McClung to get their lick back. They sent them to get their lick back. They said, oh... You think that y'all got it? Now, what team did Wayne Simmons play for when he won that uh, NHL All-Star Game MVP? Flyers. The Philadelphia Flyers. Mm -hmm. And yet, Philly sent a white flyer to win the <laughs> Duck Pots. Open your third like, eye, brother. Open like, your third eye, brother. You, you hey, decalcify hey, your pineal gland. Decalcify <laughs> your pineal gland. You know what I mean? Order, hey, order the facts over Axe Seamoss. It's only $800 per eight ounces. Don't worry about it. We'll get y'all the details on it later. But, but all I'm saying is, this was this was disheartening. But you know what? Mac did his thing. It was great to see, man. It was, I won't go as far as to say Mac saved the dunk contest, but it was electrifying. It was definitely electrifying. And it wasn't just because of him, because there were other good dunk. Again, Jericho says, get him out of here. Don't, don't have him near another dunk contest. Get, stop it. Cut it, get him out of here, pack it up. But honestly, he is athletic enough where he could like you could tell he didn't think he didn't practice them dunks. He didn't think about them dunks. He just did whatever. And it, it was it was so crazy because everybody's like, oh, Carl Malone's gonna be my hardest judge. And it's like, bro, just put on a mailman outfit and go slam the ball. Like, go do I the thought you were gonna say dunk. a Girl Scout outfit. Oh, oh my oh, God! Oh, hold on, oh, bro, hold, hold, on. on. Bro, hold on! Oh my God! What happened to birds? You know they they selling cookies right now. Go go ahead and get yourself some tagalongs or some uh, I don't know nah, what they call nah, some. I'm not awesome. supporting this ad yeah. right now. I'm not supporting this. Ad. Hey, listen! Hey, listen, man! Hey, listen! All right, what? Well, listen! All I'm saying is the dunk contest was exciting. It was good to see. But in talking about the All Star Game. Carl Malone, once again, you know, he loves controversy, says that this is the worst basketball game that he's ever seen and that it wasn't competitive at all and there was no defense played and all that good stuff. Do y'all feel like the, the All-Star game has lost its luster and how do we get it back? Uh, Yes, it's lost its luster. Um, And I'm not even necessarily going to disagree. I don't want to agree with Carl Malone, but I will say it's one of this, arguably the worst All-Star game I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought they found a solution with this new format, with this new scoring. Because um, the past two years before this have been pretty competitive. But I don't, I don't want to sound like an old head. But I feel like it would be different if all the older veteran players that were eligible for the All-Star game were playing. Because I feel like they're the ones that really like drove that competitive nature into the fourth quarter. But this year, we had a 25% of LeBron. We had no Steph Curry. We had no Kevin Durant. I feel like those were the players that made it competitive the past few years. I don't really have an answer on how to fix it or how to make it competitive again. We knew we were watching a glorified pickup game in those first three quarters. But the fourth quarter of the All-Star game? They were playing. There was some elite basketball we were seeing. And they I, were slapping I, the floor. It was I, I, do, I don't know how we get back to that point. I don't have an answer for that. So I, I actually got an answer for that, right? Simple, simple. You give them a motive. You give them a motive. The reason why the last two were good, because Kobe had just died. They changed the format to represent Kobe. And LeBron made it a point like, this is for Kobe now. This is no longer about an all-star game. Everybody went out there was like, this is this is for Kobe, okay? And, and, and you know how you add a motive to it? Instead of an all-star MVP, you make it worth something way more. Like, you know, you get you get to skip the play-in tournament if you were 7-10 through 10 seed, right? Now, that's something that, hey, all, all, all the Lakers would have been like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. AD, you need to play in this game. LeBron, you need to play in this game. Because yeah. if we even if we make the play in tournament, we don't have to play in it if we win this game. Or change hey, it back to East and West, whoever win get home court advantage hey, in the finals. 
Hey, 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 you know what? Both of those are actually genius ideas. I thought about the East and West one. I did not think about that play-in. Come one. up, that come up. <laughs> you can you skip the play-in I'll, tournament automatically. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. The only the only problem that we'll have is like how if there's players on the a 10 or 11 or 12 seed and a team, a player on the like – like, for example, if a player from the Lakers was to, like, LeBron is the captain, he's played for the Lakers, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a player that's on, like, let's say a, a 12 seeded team, how do you really, do you really try to right. make sure that they can skip uh, a play in game? You see what I'm that saying? I might not want to help, dog. Yeah, you might not want to help them. You might want to. Well, I mean, you can say that. In uh, you know, my but... favorite show on Netflix right now is Who's the Mole? You know what I mean? That's so. It, it did a little bit of sabotage. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'll be pulling from three quarters court the whole game. Wait, you mean to tell me we got the Lakers first round if we win it? Yeah, don't worry about it. <clears throat> Throw that from three quarters. I get that, but I mean, I'm just saying, a lot of players complain about the play-in tournament, right? That's mm-hmm. a way out of it. Uh, it's, it's a numerous things we could think of right now if we thought about it. But what I'm saying is the motive has to be there. The reason why the last two are good, Kobe was fresh off of his death. Rest in peace, Cole. And the players had an actual motive to play the game. They changed the the, the whole format of the All Star game to represent Cole, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. I got the answer, and y'all know y'all know my answer for everything. Throw some money at it. Tell them. <laughs> tell them that the All Star Dunk Contest MVP or Dunk Contest winner three mil winner loser one and a half mil for the All Star game. Make it. Let's say five, six, and and watch this to ensure some defense is played. Have a defensive MVP that gets the same amount as the MVP. Mm-hmm. I, I, mm-hmm. I got it. Gets, yeah. but and here's I and here's gets. here's here's how that will work. Here's how that will work. Here's the only reason I believe that that will work for that amount of money. A rising tide lifts all ships, and in this in this area, right. Let's say, like, I believe Rudy Gobert was making All Star games before he got paid. Paid, or am I wrong about that? Yeah, you're correct. He was making All Star games before he got paid. Paid. Imagine telling Rudy Gobert, "Hey, bro, six mil. Go, go get defensive MVP, and you win six mil. Oh, but you know who's on the other side that could also use that six mil? Jimmy Butler. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Jimmy is playing tight defense. So are you on offense? Yeah, you may be LeBron. You may be a billionaire and all that. Sure. You think John Moran is just going to be cool with Jimmy clamping him? Just because, like, hey, I don't, I, I'm going to make the money eventually. You feel right. I, you know what I mean? Yes, but what, what, what the pushback I have is the problem with the All-Star game is nobody wants to play in it and risk getting hurt because injuries is so prevalent now. Like, it's you yeah, bound to get injured sure. the more you play. So the problem you is... You only seen one All-Star injury ever, though, right? But this, exactly. but this is, but this is why, this is why. Think about it this way, right? How much do these players make per game, right? Like even the the highest paid players, right? Let's say Russ, forty seven mil over eighty two games. That basically is like what, half a mil per game, or a little under that, a little under half a mil yeah. per game. I'm giving you six. I'm giving you six. I agree, kids. But, True. I mean, you got to remember, the NBA got a budget, too. You can't just throw money at everything. But here's and, – and this is why I say throwing money at it will work. The return on that investment would be crazy. Bro, imagine the All-Star game where Giannis is actually like, nah, bro, everything that y'all put up, I'm throwing it off the backboard. I want my six M's. Yeah, gives, gives, gives. But your, see, the flaw in your plan is, the, yeah, what, what's the flaw? You make the money because the fan's going to show up, right? Yeah. It's a not only, hold on, hold on. already for the Hold All-Star on, game. Well, wait, not only are the fans going to show up, the All-Star game becomes more of a spectacle and more people watch. It's okay, not, you, but it's still a capacity to that, Gibbs, is what I'm it's saying. It's not a capacity to how many people watch. What I'm saying is, Gibbs, nine times out of ten, the highest viewership is going to always incrementally grow up each year, right? right. Incrementally, right? So you can yeah. almost check a box and say, yeah, we might get 90 basis points. I'm sorry, I'm speaking work time. We might get one percentage point, right, each mm-hmm. year of people watching. We have a maximum capacity on how many people are actually in the stands, Right. Right. So you, you you know you can show incremental growth, but your investment is gonna be still flat. You're not gonna your investment's but not this, gonna dip down. But this is what I'm saying. But this is what I'm saying, right? Let's say that there are four and a half million watched this year, right? And then all of a sudden it's like, 
hey, wait a minute, bro. They're taking the All-Star game serious. Like, this is the first All-Star game where there's money on the line. Like, there's a defensive right. movie, there's mm-hmm. MVP. You might, you might go to 4.8 million. You might go 4.8 4, million. 4.8 million. And then you keep it growing. And then you go five. And then you get a – because now As, this is not just a, a fun, like, little circus type deal. This is real deal basketball with the I best agree. I agree. in the NBA. But, but and, and everything so, has its peak. Everything has its peak, though, is what I'm saying. And so, and so why not try to get back to that peak? and determine what the value of that peak is in today's day. You see what I'm saying? Like, watch this, watch this. You stream it, you stream it everywhere. You stream it for free. You make the stream available to everybody. Don't just hold it to Turner Sports, stream it to everybody or stream it through whatever. And then when you stream it through NBA.com or wherever that you want to put it, put it on YouTube live, whatever. When you put it up and you say, all right, advertisers, we're going to have 10 million eyes on this. How much is a Super Bowl ad worth? You see what I'm saying? Now imagine if you could get half of that. A Super Bowl ad right now is 7 mil for a one uh, for a one minute spot. Let's say you could get a quarter of that. What is that per spot? A quarter of 7 mil, you looking at what? 1.8 just about? If you got 1.8 mil for a one minute spot, and mind you, you're not beating the Super Bowl. You're getting a quarter, one fourth of what the Super Bowl gets, and you get that much, bro. You pay for you fully paid for both MVPs and you. six commercials. I, you fully paid it is, for. It. It is, I'm not saying you can't afford it. What I'm saying is, over a while, it's gonna be a bill that is like you know just kind of just accumulating. It's just it's a bill yeah, it's, to pay. You but gonna it's, make it's, the it's money anyway. Is what I'm saying. You gonna make the money anyway. Like they but still sold out All Star Weekend. They yeah. still got as many viewership as they projected. They still hit all their deliverables. You're gonna you're gonna sell out and you're gonna hit the numbers now. But are we talking growth? Or are we talking hyper growth? See, this is this is my era. I'm a startup guy. You know me. I'm I'm all about I, the ten That's I what get I do. That too. I I'm, get that too. I'm telling but. you. I'm telling you. If you if they want to take this thing off, because think about it this way, bro. Stern put more money in the All-Star Weekend than there ever was before he got there. He had to. He saw the game is growing with Jordan. The game is growing. We have to put in more money for the infrastructure to make this thing grow. We have to put in additional little cutesy wootsy stuff to make this thing an all-week, an all-month thing to where it's a build-up, wherever it's going to be at. Now, we in the same situation. It's just a little different. You just add in this little... You add in this money, and I'm telling you, because think about it. If you put in the two six millions, that's 12 mil, right? You put in the two six millions for the MVPs, that's 12 mil. And then you got the four and a half for the, uh, or the, yeah, three and one and a half, four and a half for the dunk contest. You have the 16. Do the same thing for the three-point contest, but you don't even need that to the same degree because, again, there's less tax on the body. Superstars want to get into it anyway. So you do like two mil, one mil for the winner and runner-up. You add in something super petty for the, uh, what's that? The skills challenge and all that. And then you say, all right, cool. This is what we got. This is our budget. And this is how much we're going to spend on this. We're not spending above this until we hit a viewership and an amount in ad revenue that far surpasses this. And at least give it a shot. You see what I'm saying? At least like give it the, the opportunity. I think purely based off of ad dollars, I don't see a reason why NBA couldn't pull that off purely based off ad revenue. That's what I'm saying. It would pay for itself and literally like the first year or two, like, yeah, people would have to, you know, you know how humans are. People are show me, right? They got to see something first. Right. So you show them an all-star game or two back to back of dudes getting into each other. A dude's like, yeah, sure, we're going to do one-on-one. We're going to have a little fun. But if you make the winner's conference go back to East and West and the winner conference get home court advantage and add in that 12 mil, oh, they're going to be playing out their mind. Because, again, the young dudes want to get paid. The old dudes don't want to get showed up by the young dudes. Yeah. And next thing you know, you got folks out there, hey, this it's a ball game at that point. You know what I mean? You may not see full sets. You may not see San Antonio-style ball movement out there. But you know what you are going to see? Oh, no, he ain't getting the rim on me. Oh, no, sir. Best no, basketball sir. players in the world d- displaying it. Exactly. Exactly. So that's that's just my opinion there. What if, what if I could tell you my only pushback, and we can end the show. I know we're coming up on time. My only pushback is 
you don't have to spend twelve million to get them to hoop in USA for Team USA practices and stuff like that for the scrimmages and stuff like that. You don't got to get them, pay them twelve million to do that. So well, if sure, I don't got to pay you twelve million to do that. That means it's got to be a way. I don't got to pay you twelve million. And it's not. It's nothing. That's pennies on a dollar to the NBA. But what I'm saying is, if you're thinking about it from a business perspective. I don't have to play players to do what they're already paid to do. It's kind of repetitive. Right. You're, you're, but the but the teams are paying the players. The NBA itself does not pay the players I to do what yes. they do. So, and, and if you're talking about the Olympics, you're talking about national pride. And that's a totally different scenario. But you can build that narrative in the NBA with something, and then you don't have to spend money. Because the NBA Bruh. don't have as much money as these teams have. You know, they have Bruh, plenty of money. Right. An NBA, uh, a USA versus the world in terms of an all-star game would be horrific. The best player, like, we can pretend all day and all night. Oh, like, no, oh, I'm yeah. not saying that. Yeah. I'm not saying, I'm saying something like you skip the playing. Oh, I don't want to see USA play against the world. That, we know who's going to win. It would that. just be so hard. Yeah, yeah. But if you so skip hard. the playing tournament or either you get your draft, whatever your draft pick is, it gets moved. If you're, if, if, the, if the Western Conference, all Western Conference draft picks, you can swap with, with uh, the team that's a parallel to you on the Eastern Conference or something like that. You know, it's multiple ways you can do it without spending money. Like I Well, said. yeah, but if, if, you, if you try to incentivize it with stuff for individual teams – it can't work out because there's going to be representatives from every team there. Like, it's, right. like if we look at it now, okay, we go back to <clears> East <throat> and West, right? Even if we went back to East and West, would you want to play hard if you knew it meant that LeBron was going to get to skip the play in and guaranteed him to be, like, in the playoffs? Or or would it be only the MVP of the game gets? Well, I just said, I just said that, for example. Like I said, at the West, if we go back to West and East, right? If the West wins... Every West pick that they have, they can swap with the person that's parallel to them on the East, right? That's something that you don't have to spend money on. You know, I'm just thinking of it from a business perspective. I shouldn't have to pay 30 million and more players to play the game that they're already paid to play. Well, yeah, but you're not paying 30 million. Again, everybody's not you're getting the money. 12 here. million dollars. That's, I mean, I get it, but I'm not spending that. And I don't have to spend that. I'm going to still sell out tickets. That's what I'm saying. My conversion course, cost is going to be perfect because I still have to go out of pocket. The NBA is going to sell out the tickets regardless. But the interest in this game is going to die out more and more and more until it hits the point where the Pro Bowl hits. And I said the same thing for the Pro Bowl. If you want the Pro Bowl to become what y'all want it to be, y'all need to incentivize every single position group with all the ads that y'all got through Mercedes-Benz. There's Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Hey, offensive lineman of the game gets a Mercedes Benz. Hey, the uh, the receiver of the game gets this. Hey, the quarterback of the game gets this. And that way, yeah. you get players playing for real. They never did it, and then all of a sudden, they playing flag football and dodgeball. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, dog. I'm not trying to see Trent Williams play dodgeball. No disrespect to Trent Williams. You're one of the greatest left tackles to ever play the game. I want to see you pancake folks. I want to see you lock up a defensive end that thought it was sweet. I'm not trying to see Joey Bosa scream while throwing the dodgeball. I'm trying to see him come off the edge with the veracity of the MAGA man that we know he is. That's what I want to see. <laughs> can, can, can I, uh, so, so I do want to see them fix the Pro Bowl. However, mm-hmm. can I give an uh, unpopular opinion? Talk to me. The little weird like Pro Bowl games they do today, I actually always kind of enjoy those. I feel like it could be two different things. I feel like it could be a similar format to like All Star Weekend, to where a Saturday they do the goofy stuff, and then I mean, Sunday I, I, I'll like you can take the Pro Bowl seriously. I'm, I'll I'm, tell you this: I don't, I don't dislike it. Throw the whole Pro Bowl away. Throw the whole Pro Bowl away. I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I, I'm I agree between, with that. I'm in between where y'all at. I don't, I don't dislike the why? games. I don't why do we need them. a Pro Bowl? Football is a different sport than basketball. Football, nine times if you have them players out there playing hard, somebody gonna get a concussion. Somebody gonna get hurt. These and are the know, best players in the world. And do you know what? <laughs> Uh, Tua had a couple concussions this year, and you know what he did? Kept getting back up and getting in the game. You want to exactly, know why? But I mean, I mean, for what though? I, I get it. You want to know why? He was making the greenbacks. He knows that that contract <laughs> is coming up. If you tell those players, and NFL is totally different because NFL do not have money like the NBA. NFL has guarantees. They don't have guaranteed. You see, the difference between that D and that S guarantees means it's a roster guarantee. Meaning, if you are on the roster, which is why the Raiders just cut 
their car. If you're on the roster at a certain date, you're guaranteed that amount of money. That does not mean once you sign on the dotted line, you're guaranteed that amount of money, like it means in basketball and baseball. So, football players, them boys is, in the words of of uh, in the words of Denzel Washington playing Michael Metz, yeah, that brother starving, that brother <laughs> starving. And you know what? You put six million on the table, and that player on the other side gonna say, "I am too. Let's get something to eat." That's all I'm saying. But anywho. I know y'all tired of us talking about the Pro Bowl and the All-Star Game and Philadelphia sending their flyers. Stay woke. But come on back next week and the week after that and the week after that. Peace and love, y'all.